Law enforcement has changed uh, over the last several years. It has changed in perception in a lot of areas, uh, both on the public's part and, and on law enforcement's part. Everyone you encounter today has a cell phone or has a camera or a video recording and what have you. And our philosophy is we should be held accountable. Uh, absolutely. Um, but, in, but in the same token, it's not everything that you see, not everything a camera shows you is totality of what's actually going on. And it's important that, that our officers realize that, that uh, not only our officers, but law enforcement in, in general realize that, that not everything captured is, is exactly how it is. And for the public to understand that what they may see or what they may perceive may not be the totality of it. Uh, we, we believe in being held accountable. The, the Rental Police Department is comprised of basically four divisions. Uh, you have the Administrative Division, uh, which is basically my office and my secretary. Uh, then we have the Patrol Division, which is the largest number of, of employees. Uh, we currently have 25 officers assigned to the Patrol Division. Uh, those officers uh, are broken up into uh, four, uh, four shifts uh, who work seven days on, seven days off, 12 hours a day. Uh, the shift begins at 7 a.m., uh, ending at 7 p.m., and then the second shift starts at 7 p.m. and runs to 7 a.m. Then the uh, third division is our communications division. Uh, it's comprised of 10 employees, um, nine uh, 911 operators, and then a supervisor that oversees the unit. Uh, they're responsible for all calls coming into the police department. Uh, we dispatch for uh, uh, police, uh, fire, and EMS, uh, which uh, fire dispatch is kind of a new, a new task that we've taken on since the 1st of January of this year. Um, and the purpose is uh, twofold. Is, uh, one, it puts more firefighters on, the, on trucks to, to respond to, to calls for service. Um, and then we dispatch for uh, our local uh, EMS service. The next division would, would be our, our jail uh, detention facility. Uh, our department, we can currently hold 12 uh, prisoners uh, and we're considered a full-time jail. And then we have our uh, animal control. We currently have two full-time animal control officers. And then the final division is uh, a new unit we actually uh, started just this year and we'll call it the City Marshal Service. Those officers are responsible for code enforcement uh, as one of their primary duties to uh, help to uh, make, ensure that, that we're keeping our city clean and, and uh, attractive for those that may want to come here or, or, or citizens who live here. Currently there's three code enforcement personnel and we're bringing me and two additional marshals into the program. So it'll be a total of six of us in the office. The city marshal program was uh, created in fall of last year after the uh, code enforcement was placed under the supervision of the police chief. What he's done is he's created a three-tier uh, department that number one, of course, is code enforcement, number two will be warrant service, and three will be basically support functions for the Alabama Police Department. As far as the programs within the agency, um, we have several uh, going on. We were fortunate in, in uh, being able to purchase two canines. One will be assigned to a night shift and one to a day shift. The purpose of having the canines are not only to be able to help in, in patrol type duties uh, and in narcotic investigations, they're both patrol and narcotic trained, uh, but they'll also be utilized for missing persons or article searches and, and things of those natures. We see it as being a great public relations tool. I mean, ever, pretty much everyone likes a dog. Uh, we're looking forward to working with the schools and in, in implementing some programs, uh, awareness, narcotics awareness and safety issue awareness uh, utilizing our, our canines. We are active in the schools. We do have an SRO program that is, is basically a cooperative effort between the, the police department or the city of Reno and, and the public school system. We're going to go to Lincoln Learning Center, which is elementary for El Reno. Today I'm, I'm working as a school resource officer. Uh, we will travel throughout the schools here in El Reno uh, for a police officer presence. Uh, we have a police officer traveling through the schools every day of the week. There's about eight of us that rotate throughout the schools. That way, they, to ensure that we have a police officer at the schools every day. 
<laughs> it does a couple things. It gives the officers an opportunity to get to know the, the kids of our community, uh, as well as the kids of our community get to know get to know our officers. We uh, started working with OSBI on the uh, uh, ICAC, uh, which is Internet Crimes Against Children um, program. Uh, in, in July of 2015. Um, of course, our, our local sheriff's office, Kane County Sheriff's Office, have been involved with this program for, for several years and have done a great job. Um, but we were finding more and more and, and getting complaints or, or calls about from parents uh, about their children being, uh, being out using the internet on some of the, some of the kid websites and, and being approached or uh, conversations that, that didn't seem appropriate. Uh, so we, we send officers to the ICAT training. I'm Detective Jeremy Gore. I conduct general investigations primarily, but I do focus on um, Internet Crimes Against Children, or ICAC. We'll go onto a uh, chat platform, uh, whatever that might be. Um, you know, the sky's the limit really when you're talking about chat platforms, but uh, it could be anything from you know, text messaging to Facebook Messenger, um, online ads such as Blacklist or Craigslist or um, anything like that. I mean, there's there's uh, uh, apps on your phone that are uh, chat-based platforms, um, and we go on as an undercover profile, rather that be um, posing as a child, 12 to 14 years of age. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll, we will put ourselves out there as a child and wait on somebody to reach out to us. We will immediately tell that person uh, how old we are and then a uh, conversation will usually develop from there. We pick the, the age 12 to 13 and 14 um, specifically because uh, juveniles at that age, they get on the internet. They get into these chat platforms. To date, I believe that from January uh, of 15 to now, we, uh, I believe we've initiated 12 um, cases, uh, and uh, all 12 have resulted in, in an arrest being made. Our purpose, our goal, our mission is to serve and protect the community with, with fair and, and, and even handedness. Our philosophy is, is that we don't investigate people, we investigate crimes, uh, regardless of, of the name or race or color or sex or religious beliefs, uh, that, that, that matters not, that we're investigating a crime uh, and, and, not, and not an individual. Uh, we're going to make mistakes? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to happen. We, we, we do it every day. I submit there's no one that doesn't do it. Uh, I only know of one man who didn't sin, and they hung him to a cross. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're humans. We have a great agency, we have a bunch of good people. We work hard, we make mistakes, yeah, absolutely. Is there things we could do better? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're trying to get to.